and welcome to this episode of Startup Central. I'm Nantara Rai. This is the only show of its kind on Indian television dedicated to, as the name suggests, startups, innovation, technology, disruption. Basically, if it falls under the gambit of the new economy, it's going to be here on your favorite channel, ET Now, every weekday at sharp 6 p.m. Ladies and gentlemen, on Sunday late evening, we at ET Now broke a very big story. And that is of how the government of India has banned another 54 apps. We reported that these 54 apps uh, are primarily Chinese. And many of them are actually clones of apps that have been banned since 2020, but have resurfaced as new avatars with new names and all of that. Um, Monday, we actually get the list of all of the apps that have been banned. It will be coming up for you on your screen. But interestingly, the immensely popular Free Fire has also been banned. For all of you that might have been looking forward to Battleground Mobile India, that seems to be safe. So that event should also happen as per plan. But to talk more about this uh, news salvo by the government, joining me live right here is uh, Mohan Das Pai. Dr. Pai, it's always a pleasure talking to you. Thanks so much for joining us here on Thank ET you. Now. Let me get your initial reaction first. Now, India has banned more than, what, 270 apps, if you include them all together. The new list is primarily to target those that have been banned <coughs> and have resurfaced. Two years, almost two years after the entire theme started of banning apps, including the incredibly popular TikTok, do we still need these bans? No, I think we need this ban, and there's good news that the government has banned because the Chinese will start subverting the earlier ban and coming out with the new versions, etc. They'll keep trying, and the reasons are very clear. One, China has got a firewall, does not allow you into their country, into their digital world. There's no reason why India should be an open space where the Chinese can come and do what they want because there's no reciprocity. <laughs> In the case of the U.S., you can have an app and in the free world. And that's what you should promote, not to have a one-sided relationship with a country which shuts you out. Second important thing is, you'll notice that in major Chinese companies, the Communist Party has taken a position and oosted out the founders. I think in ByteDance, Tencent, Alibaba, etc., uh, the Communist Party has taken over. There's a total government control and takeover. And that means where the data resides, what they do, how they do, is it part of espionage? Is it part of something else? Is something that we'll never know. And that is something that we have to be very careful. And why take a chance at all? And the third thing is many of the apps are predatory. You have noticed that uh, in the finance area, the ads are predatory, uh, charging usurious interest rates, using all kinds of strong arm tactics, etc. And uh, abusive. They will not conform to any norms uh, because uh, they don't understand any norms unless they get hit very badly. So I think the best thing the government can do is to ban them. Remember, before the first ban, 60% of our digital territory was occupied by China. It is time that every country in the world looks to defend this digital territory in a manner which is free, which, which makes sure there's fair competition and they are there to regulation. But the Chinese actually could not. So I think it's very good news. So you're all for the bans, that the, the, these apps absolutely, that come from absolutely. China. Are you against it because the these apps are Chinese? No, I want to ask, I, no, no, I want to ask you, are you against these apps because they're Chinese or because these apps also allegedly read our phones, our data, record our SIM cards and then store all of that data, not in India, but within Chinese borders or wherever the servers are? First, they're Chinese because being Chinese has a certain connotation. Second, because of the data issue, you know, and uh, China is very different from the United States. And on the data issue, we should have a similar policy for all the apps. I hope we get a law which says our data will reside in India. We will have access to it. We will own the data. And the government can access it any point of time as the sovereign power in this country. And no other foreign government can access it. You'd be very surprised, Nantara, that all your data on the apps in the U.S., uh, in the U.S. apps, all your data on the U.S. apps is accessed by the NSA of the United States. They have full access to it. They know what you're doing, where you're going, etc. That should not be there. Hmm. So the next step is a law where all our data resides in India, is under the control of the Indian government. No foreign government has an access. On that, it should be universal. On the first point, yes, because it is Chinese. 
and there's a connotation about being Chinese. <coughs> Now, you know, the Free Fire ban, which has been announced now, it is official. Free Fire is so, so popular. Um, that's not going to go down well, I would imagine, with uh, the youth, the youngsters that want to play it. Uh, so, once again, ban is always the right way to go, or should it be that you give an opportunity to them to fix the data issues, uh, not read our SIM cards, not duplicate our data? Nayantara. You cannot fix anything with the Chinese because the companies don't decide. Please understand. The companies don't decide. Somebody else behind the company decides. China is a very special thing. It is not like the United States, not like Western powers, mandate to openness, transparency, rule of law. They're, they decide what is rule of law. They decide what they do. So you don't play with the Chinese like that. If people, if young people are upset, so be it. I don't think they understand the repercussions of uh, what they're getting into. They're very young. So I think, you know, we have an obligation in this country to take care of the rights of everybody. And the government is answerable to the law and to parliament. I think it's the right thing to do. And all of us, I think, should be very clear in our mind that yeah. what is being done to China or with China is what China does to you. Right? They don't allow you in the market. None of our apps are there. They have a firewall. They shut you out. Yeah. Right? So there's a connotation. Yeah. And China has to be treated very mm. differently from other countries in the world. Hmm. But, you know, uh, I I'm sorry to get into these kind of specifics. Now, you know, we had seen a ban on PUBG, for example, right? Earlier, even though it was not Chinese, it was Korean, but it was being distributed by a Chinese publisher, which was Tencent. Now you have this immensely popular battleground mobile India. It became a big e-sporting event and it's probably going to be back this year. That's not been banned. Uh, so, you know, how to decide as well, because it's the government which has also done this, or is it a case where the message is also loud and clear? Okay, you can be in India, but change your publisher. You see, change the publisher is a good thing because the publisher is different. You can talk to the publisher and you can do an audit to see where the data reside, what has to be done. Will they be amenable to Indian law? And I'm sure the Koreans will be amenable to Indian law we saw what Korea did because of that Hyundai matter. They should be amenable to Indian law. You know, Nayantara, sovereignty of India, the right of the Indian state or the citizens, the right to protect and the duty to protect Indian citizens is paramount. The United States does that. Europe does that. They have their own data protection law. So we should follow yeah. similar standards. And all this kind of stuff about a free internet, free what? Free yeah. for whom? The question should ask free for whom? For the American NSA, hmm. I mean, I don't know. You see, all these free internet people in India, you must find out who is funding them. Who is funding them? What is happening? Why are they mouthing something without hmm. logic? Hmm. So that is why in India, we must be very clear in our mind. Data hmm. of all Indian citizens within the boundary of India should reside in India. Copies can be outside. And that is possible by technology. It's happened for data on payments done by the RBI, finally. They said it's not possible, but it's possible they've done it elsewhere. Two, it must belong to us and not to that company. Today, mm -hmm. we sign away all our rights. When you have an app, you sign away all your rights. And there are nobody reads that uh, long document. You sign away all the rights. They can sell. They can do mm -hmm. what they want. And that should be illegal because the Supreme Court has decided about the right to privacy for everybody. And third, we should have an ability to enforce our rights in India. If the data resides outside, how can you enforce your rights in India? Hmm. Because the data is outside, they'll refuse. They said the data is outside, we can't give hmm. the data. No court can issue an order against them to submit the data. And fourth, no foreign government should have access to our data without our permission. Now, the NSA has access to all the data in the United States by law. They can subpoena, get all the data. I wish all these people will come on your programs and cry about free internet, understand all this. And that's why we must find out who is funding these people. Because I do believe Advocacy should be funded by <laughs> Indian citizens for India. Because, you know, they will come and create narrative which are not true. Hmm. For example, the narrative about Aadhaar and all the kind of stuff. So I think we've got to be very careful. That's why we need a law in this country. I hope parliament passes the law. And the law should be very clear. And the law should be based on these founding principles. Because, Nayantara, our rights 
and the protection of law is important for every Indian citizen in the digital world. Hmm. Okay, so lots to think about, but what we can see is that the government is keeping a close tab, even if an app is resurfacing with a new name, it is going to be cracked down on. That seems to be the big message that we've got from the new list of uh, apps that have been banned. They're all primarily Chinese, resurfacing with new names. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much, Mohandas Pai. Thank you very much. Thank you.